How much did you pay for those two trucks? Uh, in total, about uh, 45 grand. Both for both of them? For both. And do you remember what year, what year were, they, were they? My first truck was a 2003 Volvo 10 wheeler VD, VHD. Okay. And I still have that truck to this day. Got it. And my second truck was an 01 Mac. And I still have that truck to this day. Both still working, making both money. Both still working. Both still working, making money every day. At that time, I didn't really know how to drive a, a dump truck. <laughs> so I paid, you know, family members to drive them back for me. Yeah, yeah. And um, the Mac blew the motor on the way to Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> blew the motor. Right. So $20,000 later and a headache later, I finally got it fixed and got it on the road. And those were my first two trucks. And that was my first season. This was about four years ago. All right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam, we are back with another amazing episode. Today, uh, live from sunny Florida, uh, we got the reset going on. And uh, I'm here with my man Delvon Coker, man, from Urban Re Re Renovations, mm -hmm. all the way from Syracuse, New York. That's a fact. Upstate New York. Upstate, baby. Um, dump trucks. Dump trucks. And amongst other things, you're an entrepreneur as well. Yes, sir. How many dump trucks you got now, Delvon? Well, me personally, you know, I have six dump trucks, you okay. know what I'm saying? But within our fleet, you know, me and my uh, constituents, we have about 20 total. I like that word, constituents. <laughs> I can tell this is going to be a good one. All right. So, so you know, y'all love the dump trucks here at the Truck and Hustle community. Um, you know, so we're going to get into your story, man. Just kind of talk about your background, how you got into this industry. Uh, first of all, you're from Syracuse, right? Yes, I am. All right. So talk about your, your background a little bit, man. Born and raised? I was born and raised in Syracuse. Um, you know, I traveled quite a bit throughout my life, um, my young life. You know, my stepfather was uh, worked for the airport. So okay. my mom moved us around all, you know, all the time, different places visiting. But um, my childhood was pretty basic, man. You know, grew up in a single parent home. You know, my mom ended up getting married. And I was just a regular kid, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, my father's side of the family, um, uh, they were from the Carolinas. So uh, they moved to Syracuse in the 1950s and started a, a, a driveway maintenance uh, construction type of business. Okay. So I grew up in that as coming up. You know, on the weekends, I go to my grandmother's house and, um, you know, we'd do little small little construction jobs, get on the equipment, things like that. So, you know, I was kind of seasoned into uh, that type of lifestyle. Entrepreneurship? Yep. As a kid, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And also uh, kind of learning on what hard work is growing up. You know, we had to work to get allowance you know what i'm saying got so it that's pretty much uh as a young child that's how we came up that way got it so um you went to high school in syracuse also i went to high school in syracuse you know i graduated um you know i did a couple, couple semesters in college but um you know uh like most of us in the inner city you know the streets kind of took me away mm. you know what i'm saying so that's kind of what happened early on in my years even as a young teenager you know i i was in the in a into the streets per se you know what i'm saying so um, I had a little adversary as a kid, uh, being sent away, group homes, just being a knucklehead. And as I became an adult, you know, as anything else, you know, uh, it got gradual. You know what I mean? Ended up getting into more things and um, ended up getting locked up, you know. Uh, but um, the things that I went through made me the man I am today. So I wouldn't take none of it back because it was all a learning process. Got it. Got it. How long were you down for? Man, um... Actually, I, I, had, I had a couple of little small little terms in prison. So total, I probably did about five years. But five years total? I have a couple, uh, yeah, about five years total. Like five. Now, you, yeah. you said you, were, you went to college, though, for a couple of years. I went to college for business technology, you know what I'm saying? Because as a, as, a, as a youth, I always wanted to, you know, own my own business. I just mm. didn't know what it was, you know what I'm saying? That, and it was just trial and error. I had many businesses throughout my, my young years. And, you know, I finally found my knack once I got a little older. Okay. Okay, um, so you were like in college, but still kind of in the streets also? Yeah, I was in the streets and kind of in college. <laughs> <laughs> so the streets was primary and the sec college the street, secondary. The, the streets were primary. The streets were primary. You know, um, throughout high school, man, I worked, you know what I'm saying? So I worked from 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then I went to high school. So I worked all through high school and I was still in the streets. Yeah. So, you know, um, just like now, I, I do two or three or four or five things at once. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of how it was. And it's still transitioning that way to today. Gotcha. 
Got you. So tell me about that 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 time while you were down, man. What what did that time teach you? Well, I guess it all depends on what time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let, let's but just say I, in totality the whole experience. You know, my my first time down, man. I was young. I was twenty one. You know, I was a knucklehead, and, and you know when I was incarcerated. So when I was released, I pretty much went to the same things, man. Same friends, people, places, and things, and nothing really changed. You know, um, as I went back to prison later on in life, um. You know, I lost a lot. You know what I'm saying? I lost close friends. You know, I lost my grandfather. I lost, um, you know, I lost. I just lost time. You can't give time back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, um, you know, throughout that, I put a lot of pain on my family. You know what I'm saying? Left them with debt. You know what I'm saying? Left them in charge of my uh, the, the children that I had. So um, that last little thing I did in prison, man, I, I, I learned. I sat back. I learned how to form an LLC. You know what I'm saying? I was going to, to different classes trying to figure it out. And I had a plan. So the name of my company now is Urban Renovations. And I started this blueprint in, sitting in prison. Okay. And I said, when I get out, this is what I'm going to do. Got you. And I pushed. And Who, I what, what, what inspired you to, to create that plan? Well, <clears throat> it was a number of different things. Um, uh, I'll rewind it a little bit. You know, before I went to prison for my last little term, I had, um, I had excuse I had returned the streets. I was homeless for about six months. Mm. So I came home from prison, still had the old way of thinking. I had $300 left in my account. And you know what I did? I went to the Timberland outlet, went and bought some clothes and boots and came back to the streets and I didn't have nothing. Mm. I didn't have nothing, I didn't have nowhere to go. So what I had to do was I had to work. I didn't want to go back to prison, I had to work, I had to bust my butt, I saved my money. I got my first one bedroom apartment. A year later, got a two bedroom apartment. A year later, got a three bedroom apartment. After that, I bought my first house. Okay. And you know what were you doing? You said you was working. You said you I was I was doing construction up there, man. Um, I was doing construction. It was a, they were building a new mall up in Syracuse, New York. It was called it's called Destiny USA now. So at that point, it's one of the highest paying jobs at that time. Got so it. I left the streets and I just conformed totally to just being legitimate at that time. Got it. And what year is this? This was um two thousand and. 2007, eight. Okay. 2007, eight. I bought my first house in 2009. You know, worked on it. It was a fixer upper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a $12,000 house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I uh, took my time over the course of a year or so, got it how I wanted it and, and moved in. You know, I still have it to this day. You know, um, but, you know, it was, it was a lot of tr trial and error throughout that time, man. A lot of hard times, a lot of down times. But, you know, what I tell people, man, is if you have a dream, just focus on it. You know what I'm saying? You can't deter from your dream because if you do, you might have been to a place where you might not want to be. <laughs> no doubt. No you know? doubt. So so now you kind of get on a straight path. You're, you're working. You're working in construction. Mm -hmm. um, continue the story. What happens after that? Well, I started a few small businesses. You know, um, one was, you know, I piggybacked off my family business, which was uh, paving, ceiling, driveway maintenance. I started, that was one of my first businesses. And um, I might have played out for a year or two. And I was like, you know what? It's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work, you know, but for the money, because in Syracuse, New York, you only have about seven, eight months out of the year to actually do some outside construction work because, you know, the, 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 the weather, the weather. So, you know, that was one of the things. So after that business, I started a landscaping business. So I was doing yards. I was doing snow plowing mm. and um, I was doing you know some light construction as well. And um, I lost the passion for that because, you know, you had to work too hard to make a dollar and there was no way that I could uh at that time you know my trend thing was no way I could uh you know get to the next level by doing that right so um eventually man I, I buckled down I saved some money and I, I I got into real estate so um I bought my second house for 7500 bucks okay <laughs> it was well, only in upstate New York can you do that it was a burnout it was in the middle <laughs> it was in the middle of the hood yeah, yeah but you know we fixed it we got it up to par and I you know I put family members in there and close friends and um was it a sheriff sale house or, or? it was it was a it was a uh um uh, what was it it was a tax lien tax lien yeah so yeah. you know if, if you're not familiar with tax liens um you know uh People own the house, mm -hmm. then they don't pay their taxes, and after three or four years of not paying their taxes, you know, it goes up for sale. So the yeah. highest bidder gets the house. Hundred percent. You know, but that was back then. Yeah, <laughs> everything changed. It's now. different now. It's to it's tons of that in upstate New York. Yeah, it's tons too. of that. It's tons I, of that. I, I, I used I lived in Buffalo for a couple of years, and mm -hmm. man, those you get them sheriff sale houses like those tax liens, dirt cheap, dirt cheap, dirt and cheap. I mean they're big houses, like right. 
right. you know, official, yeah. you know, but, but go ahead, continue. But that's what I did. And then from that point on, you know, I put family members in there, you know, and I put friends in there. That turned out to be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, but I moved on. So, you know, over the course of the next three or four years, I got my way up to about six houses. You know, I was renting them out. Um, um, I sold a few. You know, I just kept that going. But when, once COVID came, rent stopped too. Right, right. <laughs> so um, how I got into the trucking business, to, to fast forward that, you know, I had the uh, I had the houses. I still had the small businesses. And, um, you know, a buddy of mine, which is a close cousin, my cousin Johnny, he was knee deep in the trucking at the time. You know, and a lot of my family members still do trucking to this day. Okay. Dump trucking, but everybody has diff different entities. Got it. So, um, you know, uh, I, you know, I was talking to him about your cousin, man. What's up? What's going on with this trucking? He told me kind of what type of money he was making. You know, it was, it was interesting. And what kind of money do you say he was making? You know, 100 grand or so per truck yearly. You know, like I said, up there, we only work six, eight months out the year. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I've always been a risk taker, rather I was in the streets. Or rather, I was, you know, doing legitimate stuff. You know what I'm saying? You, if you want to move forward in life, sometimes you have to take risks. That's right. Sometimes the risk is worth the reward. Sometimes it's not. But with me, I give it a shot either way. So I end up selling one of my houses, um, the seventy five seventy five hundred dollar house. I end up selling that for like seventy grand. Okay. So I, so I sold that house and I went and bought my first two dump trucks. I just I say, you know what? If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Went down to the Maryland, went down to the auction in Maryland, bought two dump trucks, and boy, oh boy. So you went to the auction? Yeah. Well, oh, another thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a car dealer as well. Okay. So I'm a New York State registered car dealer. So with that being said, I had access to those type of auctions, uh, auctions, uh, mm -hmm. trucking auctions. So, you know, versus me versus somebody off the street, they go buy, buy a car, uh, excuse me, a truck off the lot, they might pay 100 grand for that truck. Right. That same truck might cost me 30 grand at the auction. Okay. So that kind of puts me at a, a different leverage. You got a little bit of an edge there. Yeah, a little, a little bit of leverage. Edge. Yeah, a little competitive edge. So how, how much did you pay for those two trucks? Uh, in total, about uh, 45 grand. Both for both of them? For both. And do you remember what year, what year were, they, were they? My first truck was a 2003 Volvo. 10 wheeler VD VHD. Okay. And I still have that truck to this day. Got it. And my second truck was an 01 Mac. And I still have that truck to this day. Both still working, making both money. Both still working. Both still working, making money every day. Okay. So um, you no, know, it's a funny story, man, because um at that time I didn't really know how to drive a, a dump truck. <laughs> so I paid, you know, family members to drive them back for me. Yeah, yeah. And um the Mac blew the motor on the way to Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> blew the motor. Right. So twenty thousand dollars later, and a headache later, and I finally got it fixed and got it on the road. And those were my first two trucks, and that was my first season. This was about four years ago. So um, it was tough, man. All I had was an office about the size of a bedroom. Okay. You know, so I was hiring people off the street. They was tearing my equipment up. I didn't have uh, I didn't have no mechanics. You know, I didn't have anything that I have now that helps me better myself. Got so it. I'm, meet, I'm meeting my employees <laughs> in the. You know, in a parking lot every day. Rewind real quick. So you get those two trucks. Where are you getting your work from? Um, I was plugged in with a few contractors uh, up in Syracuse. Um, a couple, excuse me, not contracts, a couple uh, big corporations. One is uh, Barrett. Um, what do they do? They do like uh, paving, highways, roads, uh, uh, federal jobs, you know, okay. throughways. Okay. So I was plugged in with them. How did you get plugged in with them? Um, my cousin Chris actually, him and Mike were pretty close, and Chris actually owns this trucking company, CC Trucking, and um, he gave me Mike's number. Okay. And that's about all he did. You just called him and said- I just called him up. I said, hey, my name is XYZ. I got your number from Chris. I'm looking for some work, man. I got, I got two dump trucks. Can you give me a shout? And, um, you know, eventually he did, but, you know, prior to that, you know, I had to get- the trucks. I didn't know anything about. It. I didn't have any help. You know right, what I'm saying. Right. Had to get trucks inspected. Had to get them. Had to get the proper certifications. You know things of that nature. So once I did get them up and running, you know, um, it was a journey from there. I will just put it that way. Well, I'm sure we'll get into that. <laughs> it was a journey, man. Nah, I mean, let's let's get into that. You get right. you get the trucks up and running. Mm -hmm. Um, you have this connection with the guy from Barrick. You said the uh, the name of the, the name of the company is is Barrick. Barrick. Yep. Barrick. Yep. Barrick. And you start running for him. So you have you're running two dump trucks in the beginning. Well, it took quite some time to get that motor in the right, Mac done. Probably right. about five or six months. But up until that time, yes, I found a driver through somebody that I knew, and um, he rode out with me for that first my first year. I think I started in October, 
and the season ended in December. So my first season was just about two or three months, two months, two and a half months. Okay. And within that time, I made about 30 grand. And I was like, Phew, mm. that's not bad from a, a, a brother off the street. No doubt. So um, that's how that went. So the following year, I went and bought two more. And then- um, Used again? Yes, I went and bought two more. I went to that auction again. Same auction? Same auction, which is Richie Brothers. I went to the one down in Maryland and um, got two more trucks. And so that second season, I was pushing four trucks. Okay. And um, like I said- now, Did you do anything different this time when you went to Richie Brothers, considering that you had that yes. issue the first time? <laughs> yes, what, what, how'd I you did. approach that th Actually, I went down to this time and I brought a, a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we looked at a, quite a few trucks and I said, you know what? This is it. So that second auction, I bought two uh, two older trucks, two 1999 Internationals. Okay. So I bought two older trucks. Even you know, older than your first ones? Even older than my first ones, but the price was right. I think for those two trucks, I paid 20 grand total okay. for two dump trucks. And um, and those two trucks, they're still around today as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I went and bought two trucks, and then I had to buckle down. I, all, my, all my paper wasn't right at the time, so I didn't know... You know what uh cer certain certifications was you have to have an overweight permit you have to have uh uh, uh you know hud certifications you have to have uh mbes I, it's all these certifications i didn't know about but they just let me in because of who i know mm. so you know uh basically my cousin built a relationship with this company and he passed it on to me mm -hmm. so um you know m my second year i reached out to other companies but i had to get my paperwork correct so I had to learn the hard way. It right. was hard to find help. I had to buckle down. And I tell a lot of young entrepreneurs that want to get in the trucking game or any business at all, period, you got to know what you're getting into. You know what I'm saying? That's do right. your paperwork. Even if you pay somebody to do it, at least go over your paperwork. Because when it comes time for, you know, for the big certifications, it's all about you and your company. And if you don't know what's going on, then you're going to be in the dark. Right. So I obtained my MBE, which is a Minority Business Enterprise. You know, my DBE, which is a disadvantaged business enterprise, um, my, my hub certification. Um, so I sat back and, and got buckled into my office, man, over the winter and just went hard at everything. Who told you about getting all those certifications? Well, I was told through an older trucker, an older gentleman that, that does trucking up, up in Syracuse, New York, man. And um, he, he tried to give us younger brothers a little insight on the business. So he said, if you want to go far, instead of piggybacking off of these um brokers per se you know get your certifications in order because so if you get your certifications in order these big business and corporations they need you mm -hmm. they have to have a certain percentage of certification a certain percentage of that certification on any major project you know what i'm saying mbe is state or city dbe is federal you know what i'm saying hub is also uh, i believe it's a federal certification so i have all those certifications in syracuse now and in north carolina as well so I just I just did my homework, man. Did my due diligence and just made it right, you know, for the company. So, um, moving forward, um, that second year, I was pretty much all set. Okay, you know. So I, from that point, I had companies looking for that participation and those certification because they the, the companies also get um, tax breaks when right. they deal with minority certifications and minority companies, and they also get. Um, some other incentives that helps them out. You know, I believe some of some of that uh incentives are it's a hundred percent um tax break for them. Gotcha. Right. Truck and hustle family, I'm coming to you with an exclusive deal just for you. Call 800 991 6251 to get 10% off on your first purchase. So, 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 um, you said that these companies were looking for you, or you, I mean, did you still have to kind of do any type of sales and go out there and find these opportunities, or how did well, that work once you got those certs? Once I got them certifications, man, you know, I marketed myself. You know, I I started uh, um, reaching out to all the local uh, quarries, um, major contractors. Dump truck company. I just called them up on the phone. Hey, my name is Delvon Coker, and I'm with CNY Urban Urban Renovations. Um, are you looking for any haulers? Um, can you please send me your your hauling packet? Because up that way we have a hauling packet. So What's the, that look like? It's just a packet. You know, it, with inside that packet, it has all your company information, all the certifications you have, all the trucks you have. You have to have certain insurances. So in order to work for these companies, you have to fill out this packet. Send it in with everything that you do have. And from that, if they accept you on any job that they have coming up, 
they'll think about bringing you on if they need you. Okay. So um, so I reached out to all these companies, man. I got all their hauler packets. I filled them all out. You know, I would call and call and call and call. And, um, you know, eventually, pretty much all of them gave me a shot at some point or another. Mm. You know, so it, it kind of worked out. You know, it worked out. Got it. Well, tell me about some of these different jobs that uh, you were able to do through these companies. And these are all companies that are like, uh, like contracts, like through your certifications or... Well, not all of them. Okay. You know, um, I uh, through my certification, I have won quite a few contracts that I have done. But um, for the most part, you know, once you lock and build a relationship in with a certain company and they see, you know, that your company is actually, one, reliable. Mm-hmm. You have reliable drivers. Your equipment is up to par. You know, they want you to work. Because, you know, at, you know, um, driver turnover rate is so bad, even for the big corporations, that they look for us owner operators to come hold the weight for them. Yeah. So um, it became a point, even like during COVID, none of those big firms could find the drivers to fill their trucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we did. So between me and my partners, we have, you know, close to 20 trucks. So, you know, we'll just spread information around. Hey, uh, such and such need five trucks. Such and such need two trucks. You know, I would dispatch myself to bring my homeboys in. Say, listen, man, um, you got two trucks for me tomorrow? You got five trucks for me tomorrow? We got a job to do. Yeah. But um, to answer your question, uh, we had to do our homework as well. So, yeah, they do hire on for those certifications, but, you know, they also have, you know, regular jobs. Yeah. So. Did having the older trucks ever ever handicap you, ha- cap you at all? Um, Actually, no. You know, in the beginning, it did because, for one, I didn't have the proper funding. I'm using my, my money from my other businesses to fund my trucking business. Because right. the trucking is, at that time, it still is now, one of the most lucrative. So, I'm taking money from... DC auto sales. I'm taking money from, um, you know, uh, my barbershop. I'm taking money from uh, the houses, the, just pouring money into there. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know any better. So, um, like I said, at that time, I didn't have the funding. So, what I had was what I had. Yeah. You know, um, it's a lot different now, but at that time, that's just what it was. Got it. So, what was the uh, what's the main work that you guys do? What are you guys hauling? Well, we haul just about anything, man. Um, we haul. Stone, dust, dirt, sludge, uh, blacktop, stone, boulders, um, just about anything. Because, you know, in order to build these big infrastructures, you need, you know, big equipment. So, you know, just about anywhere. You know, a lot of, a lot of these growing cities, man, you know, you can't just put it on a tractor trailer. You can't just put it on, on, the, on the back of a, 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 a you know, a, a, a small little truck. You have to have something like our trucks haul, you know, 20 tons or better. So, you know, you have to have these things. Are your are your contracts on an hourly basis, or are you doing like by weight? How how does that work for you? Well, I don't like to do by weight. I have in the past, but now, um, you know, from the beginning up that way, you know, for the most part, it's hourly wages. Okay. So, um, um, first starting out, I believe we were, you know, probably getting in eighty five, eighty, ninety dollars an hour. You know, in the beginning, you know, now, you know, we're up to one seventy five. You know, one fifty. Um. Two hundred dollars an hour. Why is that? What? Why the big difference? Well, you know, once again, you know, COVID came and changed everything. You know, the fuel went up, the rates went up, and you know, um, I went up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not even going to turn my truck over for no eighty five dollars an hour because you got to remember we got insurance. You know, I have overhead. You know, I got employees. Um, now we have a, a seven thousand square feet warehouse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. We have these different op- obligations. I, I can't do any work for 85 an hour. So the least that I'll even turn the key over for right now is 125, 130 an hour. Got it. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing at the warehouse? Well, um, the warehouse um, now, remember I told you we didn't have a mechanic. So now we have a mechanic on site. Okay. You know, in my warehouse, um, I, uh, you know, obviously we park our trucks and I also lease out parking to, you know, my other constituents that need it. You know, I help fix their trucks. Um, you know, we fix other mechan- excuse me, other firms' trucks as well. Um, you know, I utilize that warehouse as much as I can for passive income. I got a team of guys in there now that that does detailing. You know, I do um, pop up events. You know, there I do all kind of stuff. Pop up events, at yeah, the well, warehouse too. Yeah, I do all kind of stuff there, man. <laughs> you no, know, you get you utilizing that. I gotta thing utilize to the fullest, every huh? corner of that space, brother. <laughs> every corner of that space, you know. Um, so, you know, that's that's pretty much what it is. I I I'd use everything. 
Got it. I got a car lift in there. I sell my cars there. I got the trucks there. Okay. So, you know. Okay. You talked about uh, beginning to hire employees. Tell me about that transition, um, you know, just onboarding your guys. Just kind of talk about that. Just hiring, having people work for you. Do, are you guys like contractors? Are they your employees officially? How do you do that? Well, everybody that I have working for me is my employees. Um, so, uh, in the beginning, it was a word of mouth. Hey, man, you know any drivers, man? I'm looking for some drivers. He got a license now? Nah, he know how to drive? All right, come on. Yeah. Put him in the truck. I ain't really care, man. You know, I learned over the years that, you know, it was, in the beginning it was cool, but um, I had some shortfalls. I had some drivers that didn't have the proper documentation get in accidents. Yeah. I had drivers that would fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? I had drivers that, you know, that might have been on different kind of medication, whatever the case may be. So, you know, everything is a trial and error, man. So I learned. So now my hiring process is, is a lot different. You know, I go on, I go on to the different platforms. I go on Indeed. You know, I go on ZipRecruiter. I find these guys. I need your resumes. I need to call. I, you know, I need to call your reference. I need to see what's going on. We're doing drug screens. We're doing all that stuff now. Yeah. But in the beginning, get in this truck. Let's get this money. I pay at the end of the day or at the end of the week. It's under the table. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what it was then. Right. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, you know, um, it just didn't work out, man. I found myself getting up at five in the morning, going to pick drivers up from home. Oh wow! Because <laughs> I couldn't get them to come to work. I was giving Move drivers a little closer. I was giving yeah. drivers my personal uh, cars. Here, take the car, man. Uh, make sure you come back in the morning and pick Joe up too. Yeah. And you know what happened? <laughs> Nobody had come to work. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? So I have my trial and error with drivers, man. But I tell young drivers now that's getting out of driving school, man. Listen, you got to look at this as a profession. Everybody in the United States cannot get a CDL. This That's is right. a certification. You got to treat it as a professional. You are a professional driver by all means. Yeah. You know, you have this title. Use it well. Wear it well. Come to work. Be groomed. Be ready to go. Be ready to rock and roll. You work for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of the high, I am probably the highest paying um, company in Syracuse as far as CDL drivers. Okay. And why? Because I want a product. You know what I'm saying? If I pay you $26, $27, $28 an hour, I need you to come to work on time. I need you to come to work professional, wear the proper PPE, and and act accordingly. Because if you're not, then you're out of here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just not looking for a driver now. I'm looking for a, a, an experience. I want you to come to work and be proud. Look, I'm making all this money now. You got benefits. You got health insurance. You got 401k. Let's get this bag, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you can't cut it, you know, the bus company's hiring. <laughs> UPS is hiring. Everybody's Don't hiring. Don't be mad. UPS right. is hiring. <laughs> Everybody want money, man. Nobody want to work. Yeah. You know, so. Is that I, what you pay? Like $28 an hour? I, I, my starting pay is twenty six fifty an hour in New York. You and know? how and how is that comp compared to uh, uh, like your competitors well, and other people? My competitors, even the bigger corporation companies, they start between 19 and like 24. It's like the cap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So me. I want to raise the bar a little bit. You Got know what I'm saying? You come here, this is what you're going to get. So how are you able to pay so much more but still like be able to, you know, make your money, right? Cuz I mean, that's a big difference between like this is like 5, 6, 7 dollars. Now, it is a big difference, but you know, my thing is, you know, compared to a lot like I said again, a lot of the bigger corporations, my overhead it's still kind of small. You know what I'm saying? Because your really, trucks are paid off. Yeah, my I own my trucks. Own I own my trucks. trucks. I own all my houses. I own everything. So everything is paid off. So it's a little different. I don't have, you know, a trucking payment. I don't have, you know, some of the things that 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 uh other companies do have, at least not at this time. Yeah. You know, eventually we're gonna we're gonna level up. This year actually, um, level up get new newer equipment, you know, brand new trucks, you know. Um took a little time to get this get, get all this together, man. Um, my right. credit was always terrible. And over the course of the last couple of years, you know, I, I finally um, learned, uh, you know, credit literacy. So I know what's going on. So now my credit is excellent. Okay. My business credit, my business credit is out the roof. So at this point now, you know, we, we're able to get anything we want. So we're basically, I'm shopping around for funding now. I'm shopping around for uh, new trucks at the, as we speak. So, um, you know, it just took growth and understanding that cash it's not king. It's king in the hood. <laughs> but in this business world, you have to focus on getting your credit right, brother. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, Spotless Credit Solutions. They helped me out with my credit. Okay. And um, like I said, it's spotless, man. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. Is that another company you own, man? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Actually, that, that's a brother that I had um, met you know, just through my building relationships. Okay. That, that's you know, looking to help brothers out, get their credit established, man. So... 
definitely works out for me, man. So, um, like I said, everything is good now. So before I was going, spending cash, spending cash, make, trying to make payroll, trying to get these parts fixed, trying to go to Mac dealer, Volvo dealer, Peterbilt dealer, all these different dealers, you know, to get stuff, paying cash. It was killing me, man. It was yeah. killing me. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right. You know what I'm saying? At this point now, now I have a, a, a fuel account. You know, I got a 500-gallon fuel tank on site. They come fill it up. Yeah. Net 30. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got Mac, Peterbilt, International. I got all those big trucking companies. You know, same thing. Line of credit, 30-day net pay. Um, also as well, um, park stores. You know what I'm saying? So every so not, not everything is just not out the pocket. I got time. You know, we're making money. We'll get to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it kind of worked out. All right, cool. So, so kind of getting back into you know, you guys just kind of growing the business. Where are you at now? You you have how many trucks all together? Well, me personally, that I own, I own six dump trucks. Six, yeah. And like I said, I, I have a group of guys that we all pretty much. Um, I'm the glue. We all pretty much help each other. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying some of the guys I got off of the street. We used to be on the block together hustling. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying I brought them in. Yo, brother, come on, man. Um, I got a car business, man. Come on, check this out. You want to be a car dealer? Let me show you how to do this thing. Mm. This is how you do the paper. This is how you do that. Now, same thing years ago with the trucking. A couple of my close friends, yo, listen, man, we got money. So what are we going to do with it? Get out the game. Let me show you something, man. Let me show you how this trucking thing goes. This is how much money you can make. These are numbers. Right. What you want to do? You want to do this? You want to go to jail? You, you want to stay out here? <laughs> yeah. I want to stay out here. Let's go then. I'm going to take you to the auction with me, man. Come on. And that's what I did. So, you know, a couple of people that's in my camp, that's what we did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I brought them in. The same way I was brought in, and um, we got it going. So now, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you good, good, finish. So finish. one of my one of my boys, he started off with one truck. He got four now. My other boy, my other boy started with one. Now he got three. So we we growing. You know, everybody got different firms and different entities, but you know, when it comes time for work, you know, we all pull together. You know what I'm saying? So got it. So how how does that work? Are you like? getting a percentage of that work or are you just kind of giving it to them on the strength like yo we need extra capacity we need more trucks just come on i got the work just just that's it man it's all love though you yeah. know what i'm saying it's, it's all love so you know business is business you know what i'm saying but my thing you know like with all, all the group of guys i'm telling you about the first year that they got on i gave them one of my contracts here here's a contract man it's forty thousand dollars if you complete this you know what I'm saying? This is what you'll have. Yeah. And that's what it was. My other homeboy, listen, this, I got a contract, man. You're looking for work. This is your first year. You don't got no workers. I find your worker. You know, I show you how to do your paperwork. And then once you get it all set, I put you to work. Mm. And then and after that first season, everybody flew to coop. So for the last two, three years, everybody doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? We, some, some of the connects we have the same. Some of the connects they have different, but we pass on information. But you know what I'm saying? I just try to help out, you know what I'm saying? I just try to help out the community, help out the brothers. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get this money, man. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'll do that for anybody, anybody else. You know, I got young brothers that come in all the time now, man. And then they see my, my billboards up, you know, they, they 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 go on my website, whatever the case may be. Hey, man, yo, I want to get in the trucking business, man. Can you help me out? Come on, sit down, brother. Let me show you how this thing works. Let me show you how to do your paperwork, man. You got an LLC? What you got? You got to do this. You got to do that. Yeah. And that's just how it is, man. You know, just just feeding and siphoning information, man, trying to uplift the community, man. Just trying to help everybody out. Right. You know what I'm saying? You want some work? Go get your CDL, man. How do I get it? X, Y, Z, you do it like this. And actually, I know a few companies, a few businesses up there that do it for free. Just got to put in the legwork. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I hope that a lot of guys up there, man, for one, get their CDL for two start trucking firms or other businesses and um i also hire of course felons okay you know i'm saying a lot of companies don't i give everybody a shot because you know a lot of times out of trucking school they want you to have a year experience yeah you come with me you come do some ojt on the job training you know what i'm saying you hang out for a little while if i see you're consistent we'll help you out we'll show you how to drive we'll walk you through it and um speaking of that now um we're able to uh, do training, CDL training at our warehouse. Okay. So that's another big up. You know what I'm saying? So now we can bring people in, you know what I'm saying, our platform to teach them how to drive and to help them get their certification with our equipment. Okay. So now that's dope. How much are you making per truck now? Per truck? I guess like on a week, weekly basis. Per truck on a weekly basis, man. Uh, not not even the inflated, man. Anywhere between. Uh, Anywhere between four and five grand a truck. 
four and five grand a week, and that's running what like every day. That's running five days a week. Five days a week. Five days a week. About how much loads would that truck be doing? Well, you know what, the thing with black, well, excuse me, with dump truck, and you got different kind of, you know, you got different kind of uh, experiences though. You know, they got a, they got the, the quarry. We could just run in the quarry all day, just picking up stone, drop it off in another part. Or you get you could be a site truck. You're just sitting all day, just being loaded. They might just be fixing the road. You might only do two, two dumps a day. You could be running blacktop. You could do ten loads a day because they're they're doing the road, and the blacktop is 325 degrees, so it has to be put down fast. You know, um, so it all depends on what kind of job we're doing. You know, you got some drivers that might just sit all day, getting free money. <laughs> you getting paid by the hour, and you just sitting in your truck on your phone. Yeah, you might only dump a load one time. Wow. So you know, pretty much all depends, man. Um. What do you do the most? Like, what's your bread and butter? The bread and butter would be uh, milling. And milling is when uh, they tear the road up and then they, they cipher it in the back of your truck. So they, they would say if they're doing the, the whole I-4, then, you know, um, they'll take up all that, all that road and just spit in the back of your truck all day. Then after that, we come back and we pave it. So milling is one of the highest parts of the trucking business. Also, you know, emergency response. You know, uh, just most recently, we we're in Buffalo, New York for the big storm they had uh, earlier in the year and um they called us out there and the money was right it was out there for two and a half days two trucks okay made about 18 grand wow which is not bad and this is for the big snowstorm this is what a big snowstorm in buffalo so you, know, what, they you got were eight feet. you were shoveling the snow you were uh, well, well what happens eight, is um yeah. They called us in and they had the big loaders and they're Not doing- shoveling the snow, but you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't yeah, right, shoveling right. eight, eight, eight feet. So, you know, they got the big loaders. They come in. We in the hood, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We we in the hood, man. They they dumping the snow in the buckets, throwing them back of the truck. And we just hauling, dropping it off at, you know, some lake somewhere. Okay. You know, just to get rid of the snow. But Buffalo was bad, brother. Mm. It was hundreds and hundreds of trucks out there, man. That snow was so high. It was- a lot of people died out there, man. Wow, yeah, that was that was crazy. It was tough, but you know, emergency emergency response stuff, FEMA stuff we have done. Um, How did so, you get that opportunity? Somebody they reached out to you, or they, was re that? they reached out to me. They okay, said, hey, uh, Mr. Coker, do uh, you have any trucks? We got something going on in Buffalo, man. You know, the rate is this. You know, it was almost two hours an hour. Yeah, I'm like, really? What was that through? That was through. Um, actually, that was through another company, but they were hired through FEMA. Mm. So I'm sure they got a bigger bag. So the company actually hired you. Yeah, like the company, the company had the opportunity, yep. and they were like, "Hey, we need more trucks. So right. do you have any more trucks yep. you can help out with?" And I, we went. And they were getting, and you said you got paid eighteen thousand. We got about eighteen about grand 18 for those grand. two and a half days and two so trucks. So imagine two what drivers. they got. That's what I'm saying. And so they were paying you eighteen grand, right? And they probably had who knows fifty, or hundred trucks out there. You got it. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it was good money, man. It was, you know, it was good money for the time. But, you know, emergency response stuff is always great. You know, you get your bag. How, how often do you have to do that upstate? That was the, that was our first that time. That was your first time? Well, I think that might have been Buffalo first time. That's too, true. Getting snow like that. Like that. Yeah. Like that, like that. But, Buffalo does get snow, but not like that. Right. <laughs> but uh, I have a contract for the last uh, three years through my MBE, my Minority Business Enterprise Certification, that we haul snow for Syracuse Airport okay. every year. Now, if those are not familiar with Syracuse, yeah, it's snow. <laughs> it get busy up there, and it's cold. It's right. cold right now. <laughs> and we in Florida, it's 90 degrees a day. Yeah. But um, I do a contract with the airport every year. They hire us on, and I bring other subcontractors in to get that money, too. Okay. So they got to keep the tarmac clear. We are here live at OTR Solutions HQ. I'm here with my partner, Jonathan, man, listen, factoring is an integral part of the transportation industry. Why is factoring important? Absolutely, Ramel. In this economy, in this market, cash flow is king. Cash flow is the key to growth. If you have a young trucking company or if you've been in the industry for years and you want to take that business to the next level, we're absolutely a company that can help. You know, we're a factoring provider that was born in trucking. So that's all we do. We focus, live, breathe the trucking industry. We offer fuel card solutions, freight through our partners at DAT, insurance, really any need that you have, we should have a solution to help you with it. So I hope you'll give us a call today. Let us know what we can do to help you out. Get the rest and roll with the best. Let's go. No doubt, no you know doubt. That's a that's a great contract to have. It is. How many how many like um, trucks are typically out there like on contracts like that? Well, it, you know, it, it pretty much all depends on the snow. So if say if we get four, five, six inches, you know, they might want 
just two or three trucks. You know, if we get more than that, a foot or whatever the case may be, they might need 10 or 15 trucks. And if I can't handle the load, I send my people in, you know, to help out and we just get busy. So yeah, you you have like that contract exclusively, or is that something that they give to the NBE contract out there? I have that exclusively, but you know the the actual contractor, you know they also bring in they. I think they have eight or ten trucks of their own. Okay. So um, yeah, yep. They they're, they're working under my certification, which is good for them, and it's yeah. also good for me as well. Got it. Okay, yeah. cool. So a, as you continue to to grow this business, you have six now. Are you looking to add more trucks, or do you just like? you know, bringing on other people and keeping kind of staying where you're at or like, what, what are your, what are your goals for the future? Now with me, you know, the sky's the limit, man. You know, end of the day, you know, I'm a businessman and I'm a CEO. So wherever it's money at, I'm going. So I'm, I'm looking more into now, you know, over the road hauling. Mm. I'm looking more over, I'm looking, looking now into, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hot shots, you know, anything I could do to make money. So, so you, you want to diversify. I'm going to go wherever it go. Like this year, the auction's coming up in uh in June. I'm going to get my first uh my first over the road truck. Okay. You know? Now you know right now the semi trucks is taking a taking a beating, man. What type of niche would you want to get into with the semis? What are you thinking about? Have you done like your homework on what you want to do once you get in? I've done quite a bit of homework, but you know, again, you know, I'm a risk taker, man. If I get the equipment, man, I I figure it out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got a big platform here, man. You know, if anybody got any insight for me out there that watch this podcast, give me a shout. You know, upstate New York, anywhere. You know, I also have an entity, and I uh, mentioned to you earlier about uh, North Carolina. Okay. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just you looking for- You do the truck, the dump trucks in North Carolina also? Well, with North Carolina, um, I have family down there. So when I, when I started my entity in New York State, uh, North Carolina is my foreign entity. Okay. So, you know, um, what I did was, for those that's not familiar with- um reciprocity is this paperwork that you do in your state so i'm from of course new york yeah so i called the mbe office in the db office in uh north carolina charlotte i said hey um my company urban renovations um we're looking to uh come down there and do some work with you guys um we have xyz certifications you know how can we get certifications in your state as well they said it's a form called rec reciprocity and what reciprocity means is if you have these certifications in your state they could be transferred over easily without having to go through all the paperwork because again um all the paperwork has already been done mm. so all we're doing is transfer from one state to the next Got so it. now in north carolina i have an mbe i have a db and they have hud certifications down there and sbe i have all the certifications to, to uh, fulfill any job in north carolina mm. shout out to nc anybody out there looking <laughs> looking looking for looking for some work holla at me because i don't have any trucks down there oh, that's dope so what i'm looking to do is build a brand I'm looking for, uh, you know, um, subcontractors, yeah. you know, maybe even partnerships, you know, to go with my certifications to make money down there as well. Because right now I don't have that. So anybody down there that's looking for uh, looking for some work, man, hit me up. Now that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what is that? Just like a filing fee or something like that? Or is it's just, yeah, yeah, it's LLC filing fee. You know, we just filed for North Carolina as well to make to make that my foreign my foreign entity. Yeah. You know, you just have to have an address. Okay. And um, you know, so even on my website it mentions North Carolina, but like I said, we have not done one job down there yet, but every day I probably get literally no cap, 10 to 15 bids every single day. Oh wow. For dump truck hauling. Just because you have those Just because I have because so the contractors need us to fulfill their federal and uh oh man and you gotta take advantage of that man. I That's dope. To. So like I said, anybody in NC man wanna holler man, reach out to me man. Let's get some money. Oh man, I love it. I love it. Love it. All well, right, cool. So you you you're an entrepreneur, you got a ton of businesses, um growing a dump truck business. Um I mean, is there anything else that that I didn't touch on? I mean, I think you, I think we kind of covered most of the dump truck stuff. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to reach out to, to like I said, to, to to the community out there, and just let them know, man. Um. Anybody looking to get in this game, if you guys need some help, you could always hit me up. Highlight me. I help you form your LLC. I'll show you the way, at least the New York way, because <laughs> <laughs> that's York what way. I know. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um. And um. You know, and just to know your business, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you definitely want to get these certifications, know what they mean, know what they stand for, know what you're getting into, because that's where you're going to get your bag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to come knocking on your door. Hey, uh, can we use it? We, we got 10% of uh, this $10 million job. Can you handle it? Yes, yeah. you can. Okay, fill out this paperwork. We need you. Yeah. You know, put a bid in and go. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, do your homework, do your own uh filings so you know what's going on right you know that's just a tip i want to give to everybody man and anybody that wants to go into uh track the trailer school you know it's definitely beneficial
No doubt. You know. So those those certifications have changed the trajectory of, trajectory of your business. Absolutely. And I know so much about them, and I would love to uh, share it. You know, with anybody that's willing to know, whether they have or don't have, I'll be I'll be uh, more than welcome to help anybody out with that. Yeah. You know, like I said, uh, DBE is federal. MBE is state and city. Uh, the hub certification for down south, I believe that's also state and federal. Um, they got the SBE. They got, you know, they even got a, uh, excuse me, a veteran certification. Mm. So um, companies look for that. Right. And if you got that ticket, you got the ticket. Do you do any work outside of those type of certifications now? Or everything's all like. Yeah, I okay. do. I do. Like majority of my work is is, is is contracted work. You know, with those certifications, you know, sometimes I bid, sometimes I don't bid on things. You know, it depends on the time, the place, where it is, what kind of hauling we're doing. And I got to take into consideration, um, you know, uh, again, um, what's really going on. Yeah. You know, I don't want to commit myself to a job two hours away. And I try to central myself within maybe an hour radius outside of outside of my city. Got it. You know what I'm saying? But within that hour radius, I might have about 10 contractors or 10 big corporation companies that I deal with. So I'm constantly busy. You know what I'm saying? Just like this upcoming week, Monday, you know, um, you know, I'm doing a big contract uh, for a company, tearing up a whole road. Then I'm doing another big contract in downtown Syracuse, tearing up a road and paving it. Um, and it's, I just have endless Endless work for the year. Opportunities. Endless. Yeah. You know, What's the biggest challenge that you face in your business? <sighs> well, <laughs> in the beginning, you know, it was monetary. It was money. And it, I, I told you before about, um, you know, driver turnover rate. Um, I think now I don't really have any major obstacles I'm going through right now outside of just, uh, um, you know, just dealing with different companies, dealing with rates. Dealing, just dealing with rates. But outside of that, what's the, man. What's the problem with rates? Well, you know, a, a lot of these contractors, at least up that way, are stuck in the old way. So like, okay, we're only going to pay this. We're not going to max. We're not going to We're not gonna go over this. But listen, if you want this certification, you have to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing up to 20 trucks to, to, to whatever job you have, if need be. Right. So you got to pay. I'm not, I'm not doing no job for $100 an hour. I'm not doing a job for 110 we need this money. You need us. We need you. Yeah. You know, because a lot of those companies have their price already capped in the contract. Yeah. We're only going to pay this for this and you only can haul that. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> and you're able to get around that. Yeah. Yeah. So thank but, you. But I'm sure they pushed back though. Yeah. Listen, this year was the first year that a contractor called me and said, hey, Delvon, how much do we got to have to get you guys this year? How much do we have to have? Mm. Um, We need a price for hauling. We need a price for uh, paving, we need a price for site work. Let us know what you want to have and we'll give you what you want. And that's just what it was. Well, I want this. Okay, no problem, sir. See you next week. And that was it. You know, once you get to that point, you know, that's it, man. You know what I'm saying? And why do you think that was? That you were able to well, I dealt with this leverage? I dealt with this particular company, you know, since I started. And they seen me at my lowest point. Me calling every day, oh, man, sorry, man, I know we, I bid for, for, for three trucks, man, damn, we only got one. Then the next day come, we got bid for three trucks, and they all broke, but they watched me grow. So it's about, like everybody always say, building relationships. Yeah. So they had, some of those companies had faith in me, I had faith in myself, and once I got myself together and finally got, you know, um, my facility, and I got a mechanic, and I got my credit situated, everything kind of just fell in place, you know what I'm saying? So now, you know what I'm saying, they need us to come in. It's they they might want eight trucks tomorrow, and I'm like, yo, I only give you four. Oh man, please, just can you take one from one of the other guys? Yeah, like you know that part, man. You know, so you know, again, building relationships with these companies, man. Um, now I I burned some bridges along the way, mm. and I regret it. And some of those companies I made right with, and some things you can't make right. Burn some bridges, how? Well, my first year, um. I was given opportunities, you know, for net 30s. So I got a net 30 through a fuel company. They come fueled up our fuel tank. I got a net 30 through a, a you know, we need tires all the time. Tires is expensive. Yeah. You know, two tires could be $2,000. So I got a net 30 with a tire company and I got a net 30 through, a, a, I think it was a road mechanics. They always come in handy. You know, it's good to have a facility and it's good to have a, a, a somewhere to take your truck. But when you break down on the road, you got to call that road mechanic and they might want, uh, $300 to come do a five minute fix. So I burned a few bridges back then, man. I had, I still had the old way of thinking, the old mentality, man, get what you get and keep it moving. Mm. And, um, you know, I learned that, you know, that kind of put a, a damper 
under, under the name of my company in the beginning. Mm. So what I had to do, I had to make it right. I had to pay him back. Nick, what is Fleet Drive 360? It's hard to put that into one sentence. The compliance process is so complex. So what Fleet Drive 360 does is it makes it simple. It gives you a process and a foundation that you can build on and allows you to hire your drivers, onboard them quickly, maintain their compliance documents throughout the life of that driver or that vehicle. And it gives you one place to go when things get crazy, one place to go to find out the compliance status of your entire business. What it is, is that one-stop shop for all your compliance needs. So when you say Brendan, you just didn't pay him. Didn't pay him. <laughs> just like the streets, <laughs> ran off with the plug, ran off on the plug twice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I had to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. like I said, you know, good relationships go a long way, and bad relationships will definitely put a damper. You know what I'm saying? In your business, right? So with that being said, you know the tire company started calling around. Hey, Urban Renovations, man, those guys, those guys don't pay. Mm. Don't sell them no tires. The fuel company said, listen. You owe us five grand. Um, we're gonna make some calls, and you ain't gonna be able to get no fuel. Oh, wow. See you at Sunoco. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But right. my fuel tank is located right where my trucks is. So when they fill me up, you know the fuel station is one of the worst places where things happen. At you pull up at a fuel station, there might be twenty dump trucks or twenty trucks there, tractor trailers. You gotta wait in line. Yeah. And now you're late. So you know I made it my another thing for entrepreneurs that's in the trucking business, and if you can. Try to get your own fuel tank on your compound, man, because them drivers will go in there and get coffee and hang out, and it just takes some time. No doubt. But um, again, I burnt a few bridges in the beginning, and um, some I was able to make right. Like the fuel company I'm just talking about now, um, they cut me off of credit for years. They just gave it back. Mm. They said, Mr. Coker, you've been paying cash money, things on time. We noticed that your credit is out the roof. You know what? We'll bring you back in. But- um, we're just gonna do credit one one, one job at a time. <laughs> we're gonna take our time with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one, you know, one load at a time instead of a whole net thirty. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you know, building that relationship back with them. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it's definitely key, man. You know, be nice to people, man. Build relationships, man. Speak well. And this is if you're a professional, be a professional. You know what I'm saying? Talk professional. Travel professional. Because it goes a long way. You know, rather what industry you're in, trucking, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to carry myself that way. I'm a CEO of my company. I carry myself that way. When I talk to people, I let them know who I am and what I do and what I can do. And if I can help you, I let you know I can help you, brother. And if I can't, maybe I'll be able to direct you in the right place. For sure. For That's sure. what it's about. What was, what was the most stressful day that you could remember in, 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 oh my God. in the history of your business? And what happened that day? When, when I first got my first two trucks, I sold one of my houses. I got that, that, got that, 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 got that money, and I just, yep, I'm going to get two trucks. I'm gonna be rich, <laughs> <laughs> man. I went down there, man. I was the worst day of my life. So the truck motor blew on the, on the freaking highway. So I had to pay a tow truck company to come tow it. Yeah, that was probably two or three grand. Then I had to get it towed from Maryland to Syracuse. That was like four grand. I'm tapped. I'm still holding on to a little bit of pocket change I got left. Right, right. So, you know, um, that was probably the worst day, man, because I had to get a I had to get a ride back. I had to get the car towed. And then, you know, down in the small little small little hick towns, or whatever the case may be, you know, when they get your equipment, they just inflated everything. Mm. So they just my bill was crazy. But when I finally got it back, you know, again, um, to get the motor in with the labor, it almost cost me twenty thousand dollars. And this is the beginning. It's before I got one tire on the road. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that was probably my worst experience, man. Not having the knowledge to know the equipment. Um, not having the proper people to check over my equipment. I'm not a mechanic. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know. I just said, yo, I like that truck and I like that truck. Yeah, let's get it. Yep. I'll bid on that. And yeah. It was just a mistake. So now when I go, I take my time. I do my research. I want to know what kind of motor I got. Is it a cat? Is it the Detroit? Is it the Volvo motor? You know, what is it? You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I like cat motors. But um, you know, I have different kind of trucks. I got different kind of things, though. But I do my extensive homework now. When we go to check out trucks, if they're used, even with my friends, we do an extensive overlook of everything. Because when, they get, when we get it back to where it needs to go, up our way, it needs to be in working condition, man. I don't want to buy no junk. No doubt. And I don't want to sell no junk. I don't want to do no dun junky job. I just want everything to go smooth, man. But that was probably the worst day. Ever. <laughs> I could dig it. It sounds crazy. How, how are you keeping these older trucks on the road and working for you? So you got a truck that's a 99, as an early 2000s. 
What are you doing? Like, are you overhauling them? Like, how are you keeping them on the road? Nah, um, you know, just good maintenance, man. Um, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Um, you know, listen, uh, I love you guys that that represent the newer trucks, and I'm gonna have a newer truck really soon. But our trucks make the same amount of money. Your truck make one fifty an hour. Guess what? Mine do too. And um, since I've you know revamped my facility, we don't have any breakdowns. We have little light repairs that we do. Right. So I don't even have an issue, you know, with 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 my trucks. My oldest truck, believe it or not, man, um, is a 1994 International. That's my oldest truck, and I had that truck now for over a year. I haven't had to put a penny into it. It's a workhorse. Mm. It's a workhorse, just like those 99 Internationals, and I got a what a 2010 Peterbilt, which is not as old, but it's a little newer. Um, they work horses, man. I never had to do um, too much major. Well, I had to put a, a couple motors in. You know what I'm saying? In, in the Mac, we talked about into my my, my Peter belt, but you know, for the most part, man. Um, you know, I just get it going. But you know, that was the beginning. So I'm still at the beginning stages of my career with this truck and stuff. You know, four years in, right? And it's going to be many more to go. So you know, as I evolve, everything else is going to evolve. We got a seven thousand square feet warehouse now. We might have a 14,000 square feet warehouse the next time we chat. You know what I'm saying? I might have 10 brand new trucks the next time we chat. But this is just the beginning. So, you know, I say that to say, you know, to anybody that's out there, man, you got to start somewhere. And, you know, um, you start somewhere, you do your right due diligence, you know, where you want to end up, you could be there. So I know where I want to be. Yeah. I know I'm going to continue with the trucking and hauling and in the transportation industry. But am I going to be doing dump trucking forever? Probably. You know, am I going to be doing some form of logistics? Am I going to be doing some type of over the road in the next year? You know, it depends on who I talk to. Like today, you know, we have the reset. Yeah. So I'm sure I'll be enlightened by some of the good brothers and sisters there For sure. about different ways to get money in New York State, in North Carolina, maybe all over the country. Yeah. So, you know, I'm here. This is what I'm here for. No doubt. You know, I'm here to, to absorb information and bring it back, you know what I'm saying, to my community, to my cities, and give it back to the others yeah. so we could all learn and grow together. No so doubt. it's it's limitless to what I'm trying to do. This is just the beginning. I love that. H have, has your uh, the dump trucks grossed over seven figures yet? Yes, sir. W where you at now? We we've definitely made um, over a million dollars. Okay, we definitely made over a million dollars. But you know how that goes. You can make money. You don't get to see it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we definitely made over a million dollars, man. And maybe a couple. Like maybe two, three. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Within the time that I've been trucking. But again, you know how it goes. You know, but this year is going to be the year. You know, um, like I said, every all my ducks is in a row. So this year we're definitely going hard, and and um, probably by the end of this season or mid season, I will have something going on, if not sooner, in the Carolinas too, because the Carolinas they work all year round. Yeah. You know, our trucking season start into March, and we usually end around November, December. That's eight nine months of heavy hauling. But in the Carolinas, they pay a little less. But they work all year round, so kind of levels itself out and kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the next market I'm going to tap into being that I'm already certified to do work there. So I, if I had a, a truck there today, we'll be working tomorrow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's one of the next things that we're going to do outside of looking into over the road stuff and okay. logistics and maybe even brokering. You know, it's, it's, it's sky's the limit. Yeah. And a lot of stuff, believe it or not, I learned on this platform. Oh, wow. That's yeah. what's up. So you definitely been a bit, this platform definitely been a big help in in, in my decisions lately. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Seriously. So yeah. looking forward to you know um the reset today yeah. and yeah. you know amongst other things you know meeting greeting you know and building relationships. Yeah, nah, it's it's all about relationships, man. I tell right. people that right, man, all the time. And I learned, I learned, I learned the hard way. You know? <laughs> For sure, I'm hard headed, man. You, I'm hard. You've destroyed some, but you're building them back. That's right. You That's right. I mean? That's what we do. Nah, it's, it's it's all a journey, man. It's all mm -hmm. a process. All right, cool, man. So as we kind of start to wrap up, um, traditionally on the show, uh, the final two things is always number one, just letting everybody know where they can connect with you, mm -hmm. learn more about yourself, and and learn learn more about urban re renovations and mm -hmm. what you guys have going on. And then we have to always do our final thought, which is that last you know jewel or just word for the entrepreneurs out there, whether you want to come from a entrepreneurial perspective, uh, spiritual, whatever that may be. So um, start with letting everybody know where they can find you at, man. On social media, okay. where's the best way to connect with you? Well, the best way to find me right now, man, I'm on social media. Um, it's under my name, Delvon Coker. I also have my my uh, email, which is um, Delvon at cnyurban.com. And our website is cnyurban.com. 
And on our website, it pretty much shows you what we do, how we do it, um, you know, applications, you know, it has different things, you know, for, uh, you know, for, for new drivers, it has information that shows all our past work, all our current work, you know, gives a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of information about the company in all, in total, in totality. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it. That's it in terms of connecting much with it. you. But, 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 but we're building yep. a bigger you know, social media fan base because I I've noticed, man, them truckers is out there, man. Oh yeah, they out they there. out there, man. They killing them, man. You know, yeah. I was just looking at a brother that you had on your platform. Um, what was it? Quarter ticket, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I love his platform, but you know, we're gonna build our social media with that as well. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm I'm looking for somebody to help me out with that right now. <laughs> That's you know, right. Some, some content. Creators. You can't be good at everything. Can't be good at everything, you know what man. I'm saying? Content like... creators, holler at me. You know, let's get it going. <laughs> That's what's up. I love that. All right, and then the final final thought. What's, what do you want to lead the audience with? Um, the money's out there, man. You know, in all forms of trucking, all forms of everything, man. Just uh, again. Do your proper homework. You know what I'm saying? You want to get into this game rather as a trucker. I don't care if you want to be a mechanic, if you want to be an owner operator. Um, you got to know your stuff, man. And always, 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 we are professionals. You know what I'm saying? We're professionals, man. So let's do it the right way. You know, and if you need information, there's plenty of it out there, man. You got T, you know, you got me, and you got this trucking platform. You could always reach out to me, and I'm sure anybody as well, man. You know what I'm saying? Build relationships, get your credit together. You get your business credit together. You know what I'm saying? Get your LLC right. And let's get this money. No doubt. I love it. Delvon, mm -hmm. Urban Renovations, urban man. Renovations. It's been a dope conversation, man. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Number one, to support the reset. Right. And then also to come and sit with me and talk about your business, everything you're building mm -hmm. in Syracuse and Syracuse. soon to be the Carolinas. Yes. Um, so definitely reach out to him, man. That's huge that you have that opportunity for people out there. So mm -hmm. um, we'll look into that. All right, Hustle fam, if you don't respect that, your whole perspective is whack. You know what we do around this time. If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Myself, Delvon, Urban Renovations, we are out. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go. <laughs>